All right, continuing on with our universal force of gravity problems. One through five were worked out on the other video for you. Number six, I said, you see this sheet, which I have page. I'll talk you through it a little bit. Always, again, start with the basic equation. Force is equal to G. Force of gravitational attraction is equal to G times the first mass times the second mass divided by the square of the distance between their centers. So we want to find of each object, so we're solving for m1 and m2, which would be equal to this. The force times the rate um, squared divided by the gravitational constant. Now we were given the distance in uh, millimeters, so you have to convert that to meters to be consistent with the units inside of G. So that's 0 .002 meters, which is just R squared here whole thing squared times the force between them, which was the small number of newtons, divided by the gravitational constant. This, this as we know from before. So since the objects are equal in mass, m1 will be equal to m2, which then is equal to the square root of this number because m1 times m2 is 623.7 kilograms squared. And when you find the same square root of that number, you get the objects are equal to 25.0 kilograms. So those pretty big objects close together compared to the human body have a real small force of gravity between them, only 0 0.0104 newtons. 7 and 8 weren't required, so we're moving down to 9. Dropping a ball while standing on the surface of at what rate would ex it accelerate towards the ground? All right. Now, there's probably more than one way to work this one out. The way I did it was looking at the ratio of the force of gravity on Mars to the force of gravity on Earth, then compare that to the acceleration of gravity on Earth. So I'm looking at the force on Mars compared to the force on Earth as it would uh, work on this ball that you've dropped. So you're dropping a ball on Mars like this one. Whoops, missed the ball. There it is. Gravity made that fall on the paper, it'll make it fall on Mars at a slower rate. So, looking at this equation then, I just set it up as a ratio. The force on Mars would be equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the ball, times the mass of Mars, divided by the radius squared of Mars. Then the force of gravity on Earth would be equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the ball, times the mass of the Earth, divided by the radius squared of the Earth. Now, if we look at that, that reduces down to the value I have over here because G is in the numerator and in the denominator, so those values, they will cancel each other out. They'll divide out. So the ball is the same on Earth as it is on Mars, so you can get rid of those two, and it reduces to the ratio of Mars divided by the radius squared of Mars. All of that divided the mass on, of Earth divided by the radius squared of Earth. So I put in the numbers down here. I, you know, skip through some of this on the other sheet. I've written them out here, and you end up, if we look at our units, you've got uh, kilograms up here. That will cancel out the kilograms down here. You'll have meters squared here, which will cancel out squared here. So you're left with two unitless numbers for the ratio, which is 5.562 times 10 to the 10th divided by 1.469 times 10 to the 11th. That's from on the other sheet. Or if you divide these two numbers, you end up with a ratio of 0 0.378. 0 0.378. So the force is 0 0.0378, um, that of the force of gravity on Earth. So earlier in the year, that the acceleration of gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we take Mars's value compared to Earth at 0.378 times... The 9.8, and we get end up with 3.71 meters second squared. So the ball that would accelerate this fast on Earth would accelerate slower on Mars. We'll do number 10 here today also. Let's see, number 10 talks about the space probe landing on an asteroid of this diameter and finds the strength of its gravitational field to be this value, 4 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons per kilogram. You perhaps referred to your notes from class that says when they talk gravitational field, that is the 
force of gravity on a mass of one kilogram. So the force of gravity per kilogram. So you'll use one for the mass of the um, object, the space probe, because its field strength is per kilogram. And it doesn't really matter if that's the mass of the space probe, it's the mass per kilogram of gravitational field, so you can use that as one kilogram as the mass, two here in the calculation. So a force of gravity is the gravitational constant times the mass of the asteroid, A for asteroid, times the mass, the mass that's on it, divided by the radius squared of the asteroid. You, of course, recognize that you were given the diameter of the asteroid in miles and the radius um, for the disk, 125 miles, half the diameter, and you, of course, go, oh, I can't leave it in miles. I have it to meters. Figured you could be able to look that up. There are 1,609 meters in one mile, so a diameter, or I'm sorry, a distance, a radius of 125 miles would give you 200, would be the same as 201,125 meters. They had to convert that to meter. Rotational field is the force per one kilogram of mass that it's operating on. So, oh, yep, going back to solving the equation, I solved up here the mass of the asteroid would be equal to the force that's exerted between the asteroid and an object on it times the diameter, I'm sorry, the radius of the asteroid squared divided by the gravitational constant times the mass of the other object, not the asteroid, mass two in this case. So I just plug those numbers in. There's the gravitational field newtons per kilogram. So you're using one kilogram as the mass based on the definition of gravitational field strength times the distance between them squared divided by the value of the gravitational constant and as it shows you then on the other sheet on the web page you end up with 3 times 10 to the 11 kilograms as the mass of the asteroid. All right, I'm going to stop this video recording here and the others will come on another video.